Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Now, I will just uh, conclude with some important points which to clarify. Now, uh, I heard that there is a confusion. Of course, after that, everybody spoke without confusion. But still, I want to clarify that point that God become man so that man become God or gods. That is a teaching from 460 in the Catechism. So this we have to understand in this way. First of all, all the teaching in the Catechism is the official dogmatic teaching. Without any doubt, we have to accept it. Maybe certain things we have not understood that we have to go in detail through the, through the footnotes, who said it, what, from what document it is said, all that thing you should read. Then it will become more clear. So uh, whenever, that is why all announced important things I have caught it from the catechism. It is not my own idea. So that should be our way of proclamation. Because Jesus himself said, my teachings are not mine. So in the future, the situation of the world is such, when you, even when you are going to a parish to give a, a homely or a little catechism, even the, cate even the children will ask, uh, brother, where is it written? What is the source? So we must always have a source about what we are referring to. So in this present situation, sources are available to us. One is the catechism and another is the papal teachings. So my humble request is you should have a personal copy of the catechism and you should start work with catechism and Bible. So in this catechism, particularly the second edition, which has a, which has a big Okay, sorry. So in this second edition of catechism, which has a big index, index based on the scripture quotations. So any scripture, uh, suppose John chapter 1, John chapter 2, whatever scripture you find out, and you will get a direction which particular paragraph of catechism you can find. So that is one way to find the reference to the catechism so that you can prepare your teachings based on referring to the catechism. For me, because I am so many years familiar with the catechism, I don't have to refer in the index. I can automatically get the numbers. Okay, now the confusion is even when I first read this, I also was in a confusion. How can man become God? That was whenever we first time think it is. But then when we realize it is a teaching by a great doctor of the church. So doctor of the church and also church fathers. See here in this paragraph 460, the first sentence is a quote from St. Peter. Second sentence is a quote from one of a great church father, St. Irenaeus. And the second is another church father, St. Athanasius. And another is the great doctor of the church, Thomas Aquinas. So in this one paragraph, Apostle Peter and two church fathers, and one doctor of the church is quoted. And all of them is, this is called consensus, consensus of the fathers. So whenever a teaching is, church is giving a teaching, it is not only from one of the church fathers or one of the doctor of the church. There will be a consensus, at least four sources will be there. 
so that is how it is so here there is a more interesting explanation that the word become man and the son of god become son of man so that man entering into communion with the word that word is god so when we enter into communion with that word which is god so that word transform us hu human being into god into god so that is how man become god so uh, this is a very very interesting teaching but i have only took only one paragraph you should uh, later on read from the beginning 456 to 461 and once you understand the mystery of incarnation all other mysteries will be very easy to understand so in our faith the first and most important dogma or mystery is the mystery of incarnation even sometimes people ask oh how can you believe that mary conceived through holy spirit how can you believe but we believe we have no difficulty to believe but there are some people will argue us with the various reasonings so we have to recognize how to answer to such reasonings okay so that is clear another point i want to add is uh, since in the last testimony he was talking about our father prayer that is perfect we must our father prayer is the the prayer taught by jesus so in the catechism there are more than 100 articles on our father prayer i would recommend if anybody who is a beginner in learning catechism you should start from the last that is the way i did <laughs> and it become very uh, helpful for me the last part of the catechism is the our father prayer and so we have to understand jesus himself as a priest is praying for us so in catechism paragraph 2616 2616 you <laughs> see, I just open and I got it. So, St. Augustine wonderfully summarizes the three dimensions of Jesus' prayer. Thank you. He prays for us. This is a very beautiful point. He, as a priest, is praying for us. And particularly for you, my brothers those who are would-be priests and the religious. Jesus is praying for you. And second is, Jesus is praying in us as the head of the church. We are the body. Jesus is the head. So he prays in us. And the third, he listened to our prayer as God. So this is a very helpful situation because sometimes we feel no motivation to pray we are completely down we don't want to pray we want to simply lay down or we have so many weaknesses failures at that time you say lord i am lost i am down you pray lord you are our priest you are the eternal high priest you pray surely it works and also Holy Spirit pray for us. Okay, so our father prayer is the prayer wherein Jesus himself is praying with us. That is why our father. So in Matthew's gospel, our father prayer begins with our father. But in Luke's gospel, it is not our father, only father. The reason is, Luke is explaining gospel as a priest. That as a priest, 
Jesus is praying, Father. Whereas in Matthew, Jesus is praying as a human being, as our brother, making the whole humanity. We understood what is the focus on Matthew's gospel? Human nature, the winged man. So as a human, Jesus is including all of us, our Father. He's embracing the whole humanity and looking to fa our Father. Ah, okay, so then I have a lot of things to share on our Father, but you can learn that from the catechism. <clears throat> Now we are soon going to have the uh, adoration and anointing prayer. As some of you have already shared, the all three days we have been speaking on the Holy Spirit. Uh, but finally, <clears throat> in this session of anointing is, in fact, every day we need anointing, every day. You know, every day, we can pray for anointing. A word of God is coming now. See, this is how Holy Spirit is prompting, prompting. Now the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. That is a word from um, John chapter 7, sorry, 334. 334. John 334. John 334 says, the Spirit is given to us without measure. John 3.34, John 3.34, for the one whom God sent speak the words of God, he does not ration the gift of the Spirit. That is this text, he, he does not ration, he does not make any control. So in Hindi it may be like this, Om. Kula haat deta hai, chahe mango deta hai. In Malayalam it says, Alan Allah, Arthav Atma Vinan Algunadu. That is more interesting. He don't give in a measure. He gives, uh, now I'm getting a German, one mass, one mass. One mass means without measure. In German it is one mass, without measure. Alamnallah, without rationing. What is in Hindi? Anybody has a Hindi Bible? What is written in Hindi? 334, okay. So, this is a very important teaching of Jesus. He says, Holy Spirit is given to you without measure. So, already we understood Every one of us has three anointing. What are the three anointings? The priestly, kingly, and prophetic anointing. That is the same anointing of Jesus. And we understood Jesus is the main stem of the vine, and we are all the branches. Now look, the main stem and the branches, all what is flowing in the main stem, what are the things flowing in the main step? Priestly, kingly, and prophetly anointing. And that is flowing into the branches. He is so happy to give more and more and more. So there is another word. The one who has will be given more. Where is it? Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, I think it is 12. Matthew 13, on the parable of sower sowing the seed. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, 12, yes, 12. To one who has, more will be given. The one who has, more will be given and he will grow rich, more will, so the one who has, 
so that is about the kingdom of god so finally the first thing jesus asked us to preach is the kingdom of god is at hand so what is the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is jesus himself jesus himself and when jesus himself as a king and god the father has given him all authority so in another word in another word i would say his divine sovereignty divine sovereignty i think 447 in catechism 447 447 447 447 no no not 447 474 it will be <laughs> sometimes these numbers make me mistake 474 that is also not 400 and okay anyway the divine sovereignty of god divine sovereignty means he is the almighty he is the almighty father has given him all authority of heaven and earth and such a god where is he where is he he is right within us within us right within us and when and that jesus himself said in uh, luke chapter 17:21 luke chapter 17:21 says you may look here and there but you will not find because the kingdom of god is right among you among you but in the footnote it is written the among you the greek translation is also means within you this was my great experience in my first time i realized the kingdom of god is within me that is how all the songs and other things i wrote and my ministry is in the name of kingdom of god kingdom ministry so jesus said first you seek the kingdom and its righteousness the righteousness of the kingdom is another big subject i am not we don't have time to speak this but a simple thing is jesus like he he forgiven the everybody he has come to forgive he has come to take the sin upon him now i tell you a simple example it so happened when i was living in mumbai we were in a in a compound where so many other families flats or houses so my son like all children were playing football and he hit the ball it went and hit the glass window of a sardar ji's house and it broke and the sardar ji with the big muskets came shouting who broke my and you know the language of sardar ji i cannot say that here with a big shouting and screaming and and this man came and caught my son to beat him thank god i came running and i hold at his hand please please don't he is my son what your son you know what he has done they played and broke the glass of my house the window you know how much it cost it is more than 10000 rupees he must be punished i said sorry he is my son it is a mistake please don't do anything i will do that repair i will repair it i will pay for it 
I will do what is needed. Please spare him. Please don't do anything. He is my son. Huh. Okay. Understand? So this is what the righteousness of the kingdom. The righteousness of the kingdom, we are all made mistake. And we have a brother. God sent his son as our brother. He comes and say, don't worry, I take your punishment and sin. You are free. Can you believe this? That is called the righteousness of the kingdom. He took our sin and our punishment. And set us free. As an, another interesting example, little dramatic. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, there was a man in the prison who was also to be crucified on that day. He was one of the thieves. But at that moment, at that moment, the, the prisoner, the, when he was waiting in the prison for his execution, that any time the executioners will come to take him to be crucified. And at that time, suddenly, suddenly, the superintendent of the prison came in. He came in the room of this prisoner and said, are you, you are free, you are set free, your punishment is cancelled. What? What do you mean my punishment cancelled? I have done so many bad things, so many murders, so many robberies, according to the law, I must be hanged on the cross. How can you say that my punishment is cancelled? Yes, this is the order. Are you number 304? Yes. Is your name K.P. Barabbas? Yes, I am K.P. Barabbas. Take this order. Come out. What? I don't understand. What are you talking? I am free. Yes, you are free. This is the order. How can it happen? Come out. Come out from the prison now. I will show you. And the jail superintendent brought him out. And he said, look, look there. Can you see on Mount, that is Mount Golgotha. That is the place where you were to be hanged. Do you see three crosses there? Yes, yes. Those sides, the two crosses on the sides, they are your friends. And the middle cross, you were supposed to be hanged on that middle cross. But somebody else, somebody else, took your sin and your punishment and in place of you, he hanged for you. What? Who is that? Who is that? That is Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, oh Jesus, what a love you have. What a mercy you did. Oh, Jesus. This is exactly Jesus did. This is what called the salvation. This is what called the, the righteousness of the kingdom of God. Jesus took our sins upon him and set us free. So we must understand that what is confession? Confession is 
that we must acknowledge yes oh lord you have taken over all my sin this you have taken over the sin of the whole humanity in that that a b c d sin is done by me i am sorry for that i know you have taken over the sin but give me the forgiveness and the grace and the sanctification and so we receive the absolution and we receive the grace of the sacrament and we are we are reinstated with with all our credits so it is not easy to understand we are in a world where everybody says he is done something wrong he deserve punishment but christ do not say that so this is the difference between the mosaic law in the mosaic law it is punishment is given so jesus says i have come to fulfill the law so jesus has come the punishment jesus takes and make us free so it is not easy to understand this so we have to grow in this understanding this is the mercy of god the mercy of god means god through his mercy ah catechism 1846 1846 1846 teaching about the sin in teaching about the sin catechism first teaches the mercy a teaching about the sin catechism first teaches 1846 please write down the number gospel is the revelation in jesus christ of god's mercy to sinners what is gospel good news what is good news to punish a sinner is a good news to set the sinner free is the good news gospel is the revelation of jesus christ of god's mercy to sinners god's mercy to sinners so when we understand the deeper meaning of mercy that means god continuously forgive 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 pope francis says he is not at all tired of forgiveness not at all tired of forgiveness okay so we have to understand more in detail what is righteousness of kingdom in catechism it is mentioned in 1991 onwards maybe i can read one of that 1994 1994 says the justification is the greatest work of the love of god greatest work of the love of god justification that is the same as the righteousness of god 1994 justification is the most excellent work of god's love made manifest in christ jesus and granted to the holy spirit it is the opinion of saint augustine that the justification of the wicked is a greater work than the creation of heaven and earth the heaven and earth may change but as a sinner who became a saint his life is eternal so take about saint augustine saint augustine we know the story of saint augustine or the life of saint augustine he was converted only at the age of 33 he lived he was not baptized so since he was not baptized he could not marry he lived with a woman without marriage in a sinful relationship he had a child in that and once he happened to visit bishop ambrose with his mother monica because augustine wanted to know 
how this Ambrose Bishop is speaking, such wonderful servants, so many uh, fans for him, so-called. So he wanted to know the secret of his success. And Ambrose, Bishop Ambrose asked Augustine, what are you doing? How do you do? Oh, I am searching the truth. I am searching the truth. He was already a big orator, a chancellor in the king's palace. He said, I am searching the truth. Mm -hmm. And then St. Ambrose said, you are searching the truth? <laughs> it is other way around. In fact, the truth is searching you. What? Truth is searching me? What do you mean? Yes, truth is a person. Augustine completely, his thought line was completely changed. His thought line was he should search the truth and find out the truth. But now Bishop Ambrose said, truth is a person. He is searching you, my dear. And that made him complete change of his thought line. And one day he heard a voice open and read open and read so he opened the bible and he got the word from romans chapter 13 which says behave like in the day be like in the day 13 13 let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day not in all these drunkenness not in prosperity and licentious not in rivalry and jealousy Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Suddenly he feel the Lord is speaking to him. And that was the beginning of his conversion. And he slowly received the catechesis and Saint Bishop Ambrose baptized him. Bishop Ambrose written a wonderful wonderful song that is the tedium which we always sing that is written at the time of baptism of St. Augustine. Now after the baptism this man completely changed, complete change, a radical change. So one day after the, he, he, he stopped going to that woman, his friend, his woman that sinful relationship. So that woman was one day caught him on the road. Hey, Augustine, what happened to you? I am your woman. I have a child from you. Why are you not coming? I am the same woman. Augustine said, but I am not the same Augustine. I am sorry, I cannot do all that now. I am not the same Augustine. Bye bye. A radical change. Anyway, so I can keep on talking about Augustine so much because I love this saint so much. Now, when I am, I have another ministry of teaching the Bible commentary, commentary of Katena Aurea. So every day I am reading and St. Augustine's interpretation, I am learning. Such a great teacher, such a great genius of the Catholic Church. Anyway, so we are going to conclude now. We must, I humbly request you, you must spend time in your library reading the authors, the church fathers, like St. Augustine, St. Ambrose, St. Jerome, St. John Chrysostom, St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Irenaeus, St. Antonius of of, of uh, Egypt, send uh, uh, Ignatius of Antioch, 
I can say so many. And when you start reading it, you will be amazed how the Holy Spirit has worked in them. They were immersed, they were immersed in Holy Spirit and immersed in the gospel, in the Bible. And that is the treasure of the Catholic Church. That is the treasure of the Catholic Church. Okay, now finally, in our priestly life, in our religious life, Jesus and Holy Spirit as two helpers, always ready to help you. Always ready to help you. And that is why Jesus said, I will ask the Father, he will send you another helper, another helper. So that means you must know Jesus himself is the first helper. <laughs> and he said, I will send you another helper. So these two people, two helpers are always with us, no matter Think about this. Now, this is you in the hands of God. Very good, steady, energetic, dynamic, prayerful, but sometimes you fall, you fell. Maybe because of sins, maybe because of weaknesses, failures, or sickness. But you must remember, even though you are in the hands of God. Where are you? In the hands of God. Now what the Lord will do? The Lord will do, oh my dear, I love you. In spite of your sins and weaknesses, I love you. Come on, come on dear, I help you. I embrace you. I will make you straight. You got it? You got it? So this is our life. Never, never feel that you will be abandoned. Always feel you are in the hands of God. In all circumstances, in all your failures, in all your weaknesses, in all your helplessness, the Lord is ready to help you. That is the meaning of helper. Helper is not the meaning the way we have a, a maid servant as a helper. No. Our helper is our boss. Our helper is the creator God. Our helper is the great, great, great God himself. Okay. So now we conclude with uh, this thinking. We are going to Eucharistic adoration and prayer. Okay. So in this prayer, now we will have an adoration and uh, you can make a you can make the chairs little bit, uh, uh, little bit in gap. Me and fathers will come down and we will pray over you. We will pray over you. Okay? So just uh, you can, you can uh, sit there, make little adjustment and you can prepare yourself and you can be thirsty. You can be, keep on chanting, fill me Holy Spirit, heal me Holy Spirit. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. Get ready now.